Hello, in our fourth tutorial on spreadsheets in Microsoft Excel, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do some basic maths, really, using some basic formula, uh, formulae, I should say, and also show you how to do relative cell referencing, including using the fill handle and so on. We'll also talk about bod maths and data types as we go. Okay, let's get started. So I've opened up Excel as you'd expect. I first of all want to talk about formulas and what they are in Excel. So we've got a tab up here called formulas. If we click this, we can see lots of different options here. We've got on the left hand side, the function library, and we have got loads of different, what they call functions, which are built into Microsoft Excel. Most of which we're not going to leave because they're really specific, but some of which we'll cover um, in future videos. They can get quite complex, but the more complex they get, usually the more useful they are to you, to be quite honest. So I've said two related words there. I said formula or formulas. Also, you might see it written in plural as the Latin version, formulae. Um, so we've got formulas and formulae. And we've also got functions, right? So a, form, a formula is a, a collection of different symbols and numbers and functions, really. So it's a expression in maths, something like, you know, 2x plus 7 is a formula. A function does something really specific, so you know multiplication, the timesing bit when it's two times x is multiplication. The addition is a function as well. And um, we've got all of these functions up here, which are much more complex than just doing a basic step like addition or multiplication. Um, but they still are doing something uh, specific, and so we can have multiple functions in a formula. And when we evaluate a formula, oops, that's not what I want. When we evaluate a formula, we are carrying out what this is. So if x is 2 here, we're doing 2 times 2 is 4 plus 7 is 11. So we are evaluating this formula using the functions within. Okay, so to do the basic formula I mentioned in the title, really I'm talking about what is it? It's five basic functions. So the basic maths functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and also uh, when you have powers. So first of all, addition is really, really simple in Excel. It's just the plus sign like this. So if we do say five plus five and press enter, actually nothing happens because five plus five is, it doesn't know that this is meant to be a formula. So to set a formula in Excel, what we do is instead of just typing in like that, we have to always start off with an equal sign. So an equal sign is saying that in this case, cell C4 is equaling, well, let's do five plus five, press enter, and now it will evaluate that, it'll make it 10, which is the correct answer. If you click the cell once you've pressed enter, so here's C4, at the top we have what is called a formula bar, which shows us what the actual formula is, which has rep been replaced by the final value, which is 10 in this case. So if you wanted to change this, five plus seven, press enter, it'll just update it down here as well. But the key bit is to start it with the equal sign because really we're saying, well, C4 equals 12 in this case, C4 equals 5 plus 7. So in summary, addition is just for plus sign like normal. If we're doing a subtraction, if we're trying to subtract a, uh, a number, this is the minus sign like normal. If we did, in this case, so if we, again, we've got to start off with an equal sign. If we do uh, 15 minus 4, we should get 11. I press enter, I get 11. Perfect. The next one we can do is multiplication if we're trying to multiply two numbers. Uh, this is, we can't do like a, an X like that because we can't distinguish between an, a letter X and the multiplication sign. So instead we do a asterisk, we use an asterisk instead for a little star. If we uh, press tab to get over, I can now do equals, I don't know, five asterisk four, should get 20, press enter, it evaluates to 20 like that. To divide, again, we can't use the actual division symbol we used to because most keyboards don't have this. So instead we do a forward slash like this, um, and again, very similar, let's do, I don't know, um, 30 divided by, uh, divided by three, press enter, I get 10. So the four basic functions here work as expected and we can use them in actual formula, we'll do in a second. And uh, finally, another one you might wanna use is, so if you're trying to do the power, so the fancy word for this is exponentiation, so something like two squared or two to the power five, something like that. We don't have a single symbol for this one. This acts a lot more like the rest of the functions do, which don't use a single symbol. They instead use a word. So this one would be power, and then we have brackets. Let me show you this. We still need to use our equal sign first of all. Then I type in power. You can do it lowercase. Then you open brackets. And now, if you see, we get a little prompt here, which is meant to help us out. First of all, we have our number followed by a comma, followed by our power. So if I'm trying to do two to the power four, 
I'll do 2 comma 4 like this, close off my bracket, press enter, and I'll get 16. It's doing 2 to the power of 4, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Like I say, power is how most of the different functions work. These four are the exceptions because they are so simple and so fundamental. But we generally have the function name followed by brackets and inside the brackets is where we are passing in data to be used by the function. The function will carry out its function and return a value which will get stored under the cell name. And of course we can use each of these five fundamental functions in wider expressions. So it's not just you know two bits of data, we can look at it in a proper expression. And when we do this, Excel will also follow the general maths um, order of operations, which we use BODMAS to help us remember, or BIDMAS you may have been taught. So first of all, we evaluate brackets first, followed by orders. So these are the powers, also square roots, things like that, which are just versions of powers. Then we have division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction finally. So let's try this out. So for example, if I do something like five plus two times seven, and before I press enter, if we have a look at this, because we have bod mass and this order of operations, we should first of all do two times seven first, evaluate this first, because M comes before A, two times seven is 14, and then do five plus 14. So five plus 14 is 19, and that is the correct answer. But if we have a look at this now in our formula bar, we could alternatively have done five plus two is seven, times seven is 49. And so you'd get the wrong answer if you weren't following bod mass like this. For another example, if we have 15 plus 5 in brackets, then divided by um, 4, to make it a nice clean number, uh, we'll get 5. But that's different if I do instead uh, 15 plus 5, then divided by 4, and press enter, I get 16.25, completely different number to 5, again, because in our first one, we are evaluating the brackets first, 15 plus 5 is 20, divided by 4 is 5, whereas here, we're doing, oops, we don't want to do that, we are doing, um, we are doing um, five divided by four plus 15, which is 16.25. Okay, let's do a third and final example here just for completeness. Let's try a power this time. Let's say we're doing three squared. So we can do a power, can be lowercase bracket, three comma two for three squared. And let's say we're multiplying this by, I don't know, six divided by two like that. So let's break it apart based on bod mass. First of all, we've got a power here, which is an order, and so this is coming before anything else. We have got brackets here, but it's part of our power function. It's not the same as a bracket in maths, right? So we're doing power first, so three squared is nine. We're then gonna do division, because that comes before for multiplication. So six divided by two is three. So we're doing then multiplication, we're doing uh, nine times three, which is 27. Let's see if I'm right. Thankfully, I am. Okay, let's just get rid of this because it's getting a bit messy. Uh, we're just sort of playing around here. Um, I want to talk about a different concept which is really important moving forwards, and that is of data types. So data types are there to classify different bits of data. And so, for example, I don't know, 55 is a example of data, data being a raw fact or figure. I don't know what 55 is, I just made it up. It's a, it's a number, I know that. And really a number is a type of data because I could alternatively do, I don't know, put a pound sign in front of 55. And now we have more context, right? This is, we know what this is, but it's money. And so the currency, the money is a different data type to just a plain number on its own. In this case, an integer, because it's a whole number. You could also do, you know, 55.5. It's a different number, but equally it's a different data type. This is a decimal number. And if I do something like, I don't know, 55 and write it out, representing the same figure really, but it's now text. And so each of these is a different example of a data type. And the data type is important to think about because we can do certain operations on certain types of data, which we can't do on others. So for example, if I do you know 55 plus 55 written out as text, press enter, I get an error. It's saying name question mark. It doesn't know what's going on because it doesn't know what 55 is. It can't add a number to some text. Likewise, I can't do something like 50 plus five and press enter. Again, it doesn't know what it's doing because plus is meant to be used of numbers. It would work if I did say a decimal plus an integer, a whole number, but I'm gonna make sure I do the equal sign because I forgot. Let's do it up here in my formula bar, press enter, and I get the correct answer because it can do it on two different, slightly different types of numbers, um, but they're still numbers fundamentally. And Excel has a few different data types. We can see them at the top in our home tab over in the number group. 
and if you click any cell by default it will be of the general data type so if I drop if I click this drop down menu you can see we've got a general data type of no specific format this is just any user input really and you'll notice how numbers by default are aligned on the right hand side whereas text is on the left hand side this is a good example here this is because if you are trying to line up numbers we because numbers start their place value from the right hand side it makes more sense to line them up on the right hand side so we can see uh, where the columns line up if you did it on the left hand side it would look a little bit funny you can swap it like this but if we had say a number which is bigger it would look a bit weird but that's what numbers are by default we can also change you know a number from default to a actual specific number data type by clicking number and now it will add some decimal points which we can get rid of with the two buttons here so I can decrease the number of decimal points here which really will have the effect of rounding it if I go too far I can also add in loads of zeros if I want to and if I wanted to change this 55 to match this 55 which is currency I can just change this from general to currency up here it will add the pound sign and also add the two decimal points for um, the pence like that Another useful conversion between data types is between decimals and percentages. So say something like 0.5, we could convert that to 50%. And I can do that in Excel by clicking away and going to either, well, we can click the percent button over here and it will convert it to a percentage. I can go back by not clicking the button again, but changing this back to a normal number. It goes back to 0.5. And so in summary, data types are essential for a computer to be able to distinguish between different categories of data and so it's best to not just stick to having a general data type but to change it if you have got a data type which Excel recognizes because certain calculations can't be done on certain data types and so changing it to the correct data type will be really useful and may well prevent errors. Okay now let's talk about relative cell referencing because so far what we've done is not very different to a calculator except we're doing it in a more convoluted way. So relative cell referencing is how we can really start to use the power of spreadsheets. So referencing itself refers to using the value of some cell in our formula without actually uh, having access to the value straight away. So let's say we're doing, I don't know, if we have five in cell uh, A11 and eight in cell B11, and if I wanted to, I could convert both of these to the number data type, not actually necessary, but we can do it. So let's say we're trying to sum both of these, add them up using the addition operator up here. So five plus eight, we were trying to do this. I could obviously, as I've done before, type in five plus eight like this. But instead, let's do relative cell referencing. And instead, if I now click cell A1, left click, you can see I get a, a blue animation pop up and A11 gets put into my um, formula over here. Now, if I type in plus in this cell, and now click cell B what B, uh, cell B11. I get B11 now here. And now for press enter, I get 13 as my answer. And you can see the cell goes to the number data type because it's got two numbers being summed in it. And we are now using values in two different cells as opposed to typing in the values ourselves. This referencing is said to be relative because we are using the values in terms of the positions. We'll look at absolute referencing in a future video and we can use relative cell referencing to do other things as well. Like if we do, I don't know, six, seven, eight like that. And now if I can do in cell D16, a really fancy one, I can click uh, B16. Why don't we do times C8 minus power bracket A16 minus B16 and comma four like that. And let's see what this is, I've no idea. 55, okay, I was expecting much higher, that's fine. Um, so yeah, we can we can use different cells and really we're referencing the values inside these cells in our formula. And relative cell referencing becomes a lot more powerful once we start to use it with the fill handle. So the fill handle is this little green square you get when you click on a cell. So the bottom right square we get. If I hover over it, my mouse goes to a little cross as opposed to a bigger cross. And if I drag this to select a few more cells, and if I press if I let go there, it's what it's done here, it's copied the value 110.5 into all of these highlighted cells. And what it does is at its core, it's just trying to figure out a pattern. And when you give it only one cell, it's only got one cell to look at, and so it can't really find a pattern. It just copies what's in the cell. But if I did something like, I don't know, 2010, 2011, and if I selected both of these cells, 
we only get one little uh, fill handle down here. I can drag this one, and now it can actually figure out the pattern, which is adding uh, one year on. And now it saved us the bother of typing out all the different years because it's figured out the pattern from just two cells. Let's see if we can figure out other patterns as well. Maybe if we do two and we do plus five, which is seven, plus five is 12. Let's see if we can figure this one out. If I just select one cell, it hasn't got a pattern to look at. But if I do undo and make sure I'm highlighted on all three of them and now drag, hopefully it figures out the pattern, which it does. And as I said earlier, this is powerful once we start to use it with relative cell referencing. So over here, I'm using relative cell referencing to get 55 here with this formula up at the top. If I now drag 55 down here a few more times, I get zero because I'm not getting 55 like I did with this number over here. Because what it's doing is it's copying the formula, but because it's relative, it is just looking at for positions. So it's looking down here. If you look at the formula in the formula bar, it's looking at B17. Well, B17 currently is empty. And down here, it's looking at B18, which is also empty. So if I just fill random values in this, it will start to figure out the formula. And so because the fill handle is following the pattern and because we have these relative references, I can now have different values on each row doing the same calculation. When I dragged it down, when I dragged the fill handle, it wasn't sticking to the same references in row 16, you know, A16, B16, C16, like it was in D16 up the top. It just does, it follows the pattern and drags the references down to the next row. And so I can use new data in this calculation. To show you how we may use this, let's say we're doing a seven times table. I always found that really hard for some reason when I was younger. So if we start off with seven here and we start off with maybe one over here, if I drag down on seven, maybe, I don't know, a few a few times, and then I wanna do seven times one, seven times two, seven times three. So if I drag one, it hasn't got a pattern. So instead if I do undo and now type in two here, make sure I select these two cells, drag down, it'll follow the pattern and it'll go up to 10 like that saves us typing in by hand. And now I can use what we've done before and go equals, click cell A21 times cell B21, press enter, and I get seven, really easy. But if I now drag this down, it will auto complete and adjust the references for each row. And now we get the correct answers, saving us a ton of time. And because we are relying on references, if I change one of these values, it will update automatically over here. If I had hard coded it like we did right at the start, it wouldn't update automatically. And so it'd be a little bit more time consuming if we suddenly wanted to change this to uh, nine instead. I can really quickly do that it's by dragging over and it changes all of the values over here. And this third column, this formula column doesn't need to be side by side with the original data. We could put this anywhere we wanted to. Over here I can do uh, cell, I don't know, 27, uh, A27 uh, times cell B27 and I can get the result over here. It doesn't really matter where you are on your uh, sheet, it, you can still reference it like that. Okay, now based on what I've just shown you and talked about, have a go at these two questions. The first question just needs you to, ideally in your head or on some paper, look at these three expressions, three formula, and try and figure out what they would result in, what they would evaluate to if you put them into Excel. There'll be answers in the description or you can try it yourself, it's probably the better way of doing things. And question two, try and replicate this table. So right now it's just formatting, but I want you to, like we did just now, try and fill in um, the missing section of this table for 17, 18, and 19 times table up to 10. So really, uh, 17 times one should be 17, 17 times 10 should be 170, but make sure you try and use relative cell referencing and also the fill handle to make this a lot quicker than doing it by hand.